Hey y'all. <laughs> what are you gonna say, babe? Rescue <laughs> me four miles. Take me arms. Do just what you want. You're the one I trust. I belong, I belong to you. And I always be around. <laughs> hey, how's it going, fam? Good morning. Welcome to another adventure with Peggy and the Don. Peggy caught me off guard the other day, y'all. Mm -hmm. She said she wants to go out there in the woods. She wants to spend some time out there and do a little survival practice. Okay, but not the woods. Not the woods. What are we going to call it? We just going to go on a hiking trail. There we go. We're going on a hiking trail. Yeah. Getting a little big exposure. It gives us a chance to like uh, carry our, uh, our bags, our personal uh, disaster bags, our go bags kind of thing. Also, give me a chance to talk about some of my military things about like how to gather firewood, uh, establishing a campsite, and dressing in layers for the cold. Mm -hmm. Now, I showed you my uh, the bug out bag that I, that me and Peggy was originally going to use as for all of my supplies. But since we're both out there walking, we're both out there trying to find a site. Why not? We, why not? Why shouldn't we both have a bag? Mm -hmm. So I got I got Peggy what I consider a pretty rugged bag. It's not as Solid as mine, but it's a nice solid uh, bag made for hiking and stuff. The idea is to try to be as light as possible. So the items we got for um, this other bag here is a lot of light items. Mm -hmm. um, Peggy uh, ordered most of the stuff herself on Amazon, and I'm I'm pretty impressed with. It. I had no idea these kind of things were available. Since the big bag is already packed of all the stuff that we want to have, we don't want to take anything out. Everything you see here is gonna be put inside Peggy's bag. The first two items are not so light. Um, everybody who's got a little bit of military experience recognize this. We used to call it the E-Tool, also known as Entrenching Tool. Uh, it's, it's good for clearing out a little site, especially for fires and stuff, and it folds down really nice. That's what E-Tools are for. Uh, we can fold it down, and you can use it as a pick, or you can use it as a scraper, as a ground clearing scraper or as a pick. And then when you're ready to just store it, it folds all the way down into a nice, uh, compact design. There we go. This part here folds here, this part folds here. About the size of my hand. So that's pretty nice. Peggy also got a camping hatchet. Now it's a very small camping hatchet, but like I said, for getting a little piece of kindling of wood, wood for fires, it also has a multi-tool in there. It has grips in there. It has a knife in there. This is a pretty nice little tool. It has a hammer in here to try to hit stakes when you try to step your tent. So this right here is going to come in handy. So I got, these are the two pieces that I pull aside for myself because, you know, I'm impressed with it. And I look forward to playing with it or actually making good use of it. I was just thinking, because I'm like, okay, we have bags in our cars, right? And I'm like... But if we ever had to really go from the car, like, I I don't know if, I how far can I go carrying my bag? Like, I told him we need to just make a dry run. Like, let's see how heavy the bag really is. And can we really get out there and move and go? Because uh, my first thing was, I don't know what shoes I wear. Like, I'm, I'm just, as a woman, what shoes will I have on when it's time to go? Yeah. Do I have on cute shoes? Do I have on slippery shoes? Do I have, like, what? Like, for the most part, I'm in tennis shoes. But what if I'm coming from, from somewhere and I don't have my boots in the back of the car? You know what I'm saying? So I try to keep a pair of tennis shoes in the trunk of the car. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, what if I don't? So my first thought was, I need something that will grip the, the ground if I needed to go. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like... Never been hiking, never been in, put in a situation. So I'm just thinking, what would I use? And so I got these to put over my shoes. They provide a uh, rubbery, sticky grip. Well, like it's not sticky, but, and see, they're stretchy. So you could put these over any shoe that you have on and it would uh, give you the feel of a hiking boot at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we had to walk over slick rocks or something like that, this would come in handy. It is so quick to put over your shoe. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it stretches pretty wide. I wore an eight and a half in women's shoes, and this is this was the medium. But anyway, so I have those, and these are just little extra bottoms that you could have for the future, just in case you run those down. Yeah. You'll have these. Uh, I told Donald, I'm like, uh, even though we know how to perform CPR and it'll just be the two of us, he doesn't think this is necessary, but I want to bring this along just in case. Yeah. And it is just a simple uh, CPR uh, kit. I got it on Amazon for $5. The link will be in the description for all of these items that we have if you're interested in them. But anyway, it just comes with gloves and it comes with the mouthpiece and it comes with some alcohol pads, you know, just to do CPR. And that's another thing. Do you know how to perform CPR? Yeah. If not, I would suggest that you guys go out and take a class. I know the Red Cross used to offer free classes. I don't know if they still do it, but when I was, uh, when I had my child care, uh, the Red Cross provided us with the CPR training and stuff like that. So that would be good to have if you don't have it, if you're going out as a couple, okay? This is really cool. This thing here, also about six inches by four inches. This is a tent. Now, this is not a tent for camping. This is a survival tent. Now, I love the name of the company, Don't Die in the Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got together and decided that's what they want to call it. So it's uh, a Don't Die in the Woods survival tent. Now, it's made with stretchable, tough mylar. Now, you've probably seen a lot of mylar products, um, like the emergency blanket that look like aluminum foils on the inside. That's what this is. It's basically a mylar um triangular design where you can string up some 550 cord hanging over it and it will give you a ground it'll give you a waterproof uh base for your tent and two sides to keep you out of the elements like water and snow so just for survival purposes this is not something you want to buy if you want to go camping but it, it is a great emergency piece to have in your uh survival kit mm -hmm. Uh, they, uh, Peggy also got a couple sleeping bags with the same kind of uh, idea. It's two Mylar sleeping bags. It's almost seven feet long um, for two individuals. So now we got a, a tent for two, emergency tent for two, and two sleeping bags. And look how much space that takes. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to say, y'all need better sleeping bags than that. Y'all need a better tent than that. We're talking about for a go bag, a survival bag, and we're talking about for lightweight carry. Um, this is gonna, uh, this is all gonna be in Peggy's bag, and this is what a total of twelve ounces, maybe maybe sixteen ounces, maybe one pound mm -hmm. to go inside of the bag. So I think this is a nice thing to have in a bag just for an emergency, and which which we've already talked about. Peggy and I are most likely uh, bunker in place type people, yeah. but you don't want to just prep for the most likely scenario in case there were flood or in case of evacuation or stuff. We might find ourselves on the road. Um, we don't have to say again about the snow apocalypse that hit Atlanta a few years ago yeah. where people were stuck on the side of the road and some people ended up dying because they were not able to stay in their cars or survive through the cold nights and stuff like that. But it's, it's tragic. So you don't want to just prepare for the uh, most likely, you prepare for the uh, possible or the even the unlikely. I'm going to talk about this because I was thinking from a woman's perspective. I'm talking about a woman who is not familiar with camping, not being in the woods, anything like that. But I'm talking about if we had, like we were stuck in our car and we had to walk five miles to the nearest town or something like that. This, these are the scenarios I, in my head, was, were thinking about. And I'm like, what do you do if you have to go to the bathroom? You gotta relieve yourself. You got to. So, um, what I ordered on Amazon was a, I'm going to call it a bathroom buddy. I can't think of the name of it right now. It escapes me. But anyway, this is just something to use for women to use the bathroom where you don't have to bend down. And it is very flexible and you can fold it. And it, I mean, you could get it down as low as this and put it in your bag and just zip it up. I'm, I was thinking about myself, honestly, because, you know, if you have knee problems or stuff like that, okay. if you have to go to the bathroom, I just thought I would, I might need it. Damn. All right. And then I ordered us uh, some raincoats or what they call? Little ponchos. ponchos. 
just one size fit all basic ponchos that if it rains or whatever else, if it's rainy outside, we just have that extra layer of protection. Okay. And then also I got this phone off of Amazon and it was less than $8. So what you would do is say your phone goes out, you can't charge it. Maybe it's night, whatever else. What you would do is take your SIM card out of your phone and put it in this phone. Mm -hmm. This phone can program up to, I want to say six numbers. And you can use this for emergencies. It will dial 911 if nothing else. Okay. It has a battery in it and it's supposed to be good for 10 hours of talking. So say you put your SIM card in here. This now becomes your phone and you could, you know, dial people. Now, if you don't have numbers, like I say, you could program the most important numbers in here already for yourself. And it comes with a flashlight just in case, you know, you lost yours or yours has died or anything else. I'm just thinking extra layer of protections. Like I say, this thing, that's, that's the turn off music, but this thing costs $8 on Amazon. Women need more than what a man would need. I put in a pair of jeans. You know, we could roll our pants down really tight and, you know, it'll fit in there good. Or if I needed an extra layer, if I'm cold, put some tights in there, something like that. We also need a change of undies. So we put that in our bag as well. We some, we, some of us may need feminine hygiene products. Now, I'm not telling you to get the whole kit. Just get what you need. So you might need a pad or, you know, what we need for the month. Just get you a few of those things. Put that down in the bag. Now, what I found on Amazon and I thought it was interesting is I think this is the, like the female version of an EDC kit, but it's too big. Like, look how big that is. Yeah. It's too big. But what I will do is I will take the contents out of here mm -hmm. if I needed to and put it. But for right now, it comes with a little side pouch here and I could just clip it to the side of my uh, backpack if I needed to. Mm -hmm. When you open this thing, it gives you a spoon, a fork, and a knife. That's good right there. <laughs> So you get a spoon, fork, and knife, if you can see that. Yeah. All right. So I thought, okay, that's cool. That's we can good, eat good. with that. Okay. And then what I really liked were these little um, towels that they provided. So these little things here, they look like little tablets, and it's two, four, six. And you get eight in here. And so what you would do is you would sit this little tablet in water, and it becomes a towel. And now you have something to wash your face, hands, or whatever else you need. And it's, it takes up very little space. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right. But now it, it did come with a lot of nice little things in it. It came with a fire starter. Yes. I, I almost stole that from her. It was actually in my bug out bag because I took yeah. it out of her little EDC thing. And uh, yeah. it's nice to have that. Yeah. So... I thought that was great. It came with that. And then it comes with, what is this? That is a cable saw. It is uh, just a, basically a saw, the saw about two or three inch limbs. In case you want to build a big long fire, you got to have those big uh, limbs for the uh, top, uh, the top TP of mm -hmm. your campfire. So that'll help you get some big limbs out there. Okay. So then it comes with another set of two, like you you have a screwdriver here you have a nail clip you have a cork screw i guess that's what that's for yeah that's what it is and it could also be a weapon <laughs> if you want to use it that way don't mess with peggy y'all <laughs> and then it comes with several different style knives mm -hmm. it comes with can openers and stuff like that yeah okay so that's a little that's a nice little multi-tool and then you have a small pair of scissors okay yeah. That would be, yeah, and it's pretty cool. It works pretty good. If you needed to cut, yeah. see that? Okay, so that works. Because I was about to say that, that doesn't even work, but it does. So that's neat to have. And then it comes with, of course, another flashlight. We got so many flashlights. We're not going to be stuck in the dark, y'all. <laughs> All right. And then also it came with this... Um, what do you call these? That's a paracord bracelet. We just make those. We used to make those in the military when we were deployed just so we have a little bit of extra 550 cord with us all the time. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's basically just you wear it around your wrist, and when you need, you can unravel a section of it off, and you get you about fifteen feet of, par of uh, parachute cord. And it uh, also, it's a whistle also. Oh, it's got a whistle on the end. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty loud. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty loud. <laughs> so anyway, that's what came with this kit, and I want to say it was like uh, twenty dollars, and so. That's that, but so you got your emergency phone, your EDC kit, ponchos, we have the Mylar sleeping. sleeping bags, we have the Mylar tent, we have the CPR kit, we have the rubber boot, just in case you want it, uh, the, the stand-up urinal for the ladies. Uh, we have the entrenching tool, uh, land scraper, and we have the camp hatchet, multi-tool. So we're going to load all this up for Peggy. Yeah. And this is just something that we have come up with. I'm sure people have other things that they use or have, but I'm just thinking like we're not going to be bug out people, but we're just emergency people. Yeah. If we are stuck in an emergency, can we survive a day or two? Keep in mind, all this stuff is into, in addition to the studies and, and the uh, large bug out bag, the yes. large go bag that Peggy and I have. With a lot more stuff like water and food and hardened supplies with lights and stuff like that. Yes. So uh, water cleansing kits and stuff like that, uh, fire starters and everything. So we have a, a, all the other stuff that's still in our uh, bug out bag from the video in the link below. We are headed to the walking trail mm -hmm. just to see how I would make it in a walking, <laughs> in, in an environment like that. I want to make sure I can keep up. So Thank that's you. why I say I want to put all this stuff in a backpack, like realistic things that we're going to take. And we're going to go out and see how I would survive it. Or I just want to make sure that I, I would be ready if we had to get out the car immediately and just go. Yeah. How would I, how would I fare? Because we all have these things, but... Have you guys used them? Have you taken them for a dry run to see how you would fare? So let's go out there. We're going to do a little practice what we prep. Um, we'll see you on the trail, folks. All right. See ya. Hey, fam. Hello, family. <laughs> All right. So we're about to hit the trails. <laughs> I'm yeah. excited about it. Can't wait to show Peggy a few things and stuff. Show them your backpack, baby. Turn this up. There you go. Bam. Look, look at that. And she got a little Alpine stick to walk with. You know, I always recommend that for like footing and stuff like that. Um, before we go out there, let's talk a quick a, a bit about trying to stay warm. We're not dressing so, it's 41 degrees out here. We're not dressing so warm. And that's a mistake that people make. People want to put on as much clothes as they can so they can be warm immediately. But the idea is to regulate your body temperature. You want to dress in layers. That way you can take off stuff, loosen stuff, or add more stuff as the day gone. And so you, after, after about a mile or so, you'll start feeling yourself warm up. So most important thing is when you get started, make sure you dress in layers, have good, comfortable shoes, and be able to change it to a dry pair of socks. That's all military training right there, y'all. All right. So let's go ahead and hit this trail. Hey, what's going on, fam? I have, I have just found what I think would be a great spot if we had to sit here overnight. Close to the water, lots of dry, dead pieces of wood, thin piece of wood for a fire. Nice flat piece of land right there. Completely concealed from wandering eyes right there. Got this heavy bush right here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the trail. See? Right behind those bushes right there, you can set up a little tent and you'll blend right in. Hey, what's up fam? This went way better than I thought. Had a chance to talk with Peggy about picking out campsites. <laughs> talk about the kind of wood, you know, the wood that snaps when you bend it. Instead of just keep bending because that means it's dry and good for fires. 
Uh, talk about covering, concealment. And plus you got a chance to walk out, walk around, try out a backpack, see what it feels like. <laughs> and we got some fresh air and some sunlight too. <laughs> Cause we didn't, we didn't hit the uh, treadmill this morning. So this gives us our exercise for the day. How you feeling, babe? Yeah, I'm, I just pray to God that nothing ever happens. <laughs> we have to do this because it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. And I mean, but if, if an emergency situation come up, you'll be going on adrenaline anyway. Exactly. So you won't even be thinking about it. But it's just good to practice. Exactly. So we'll see how much this thing weighs, how much can I endure, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But right now, I feel like if me and Peggy got broke down and had to leave the vehicle, walk five, six miles to town, we, could do it. we can grab our bags and we can do it. Yep. So that's got to be a good feeling. Practice what you prep, folks. Hey, y'all. <laughs> what are you going to say, babe? <laughs> Rescue me four miles. Shoot, that was more than four. Bed of cold. <laughs> well, y'all, she did it, y'all. Let's finish it. We're finishing up going through the woods. That was really good. It was. I want to do this more often. We should, because I like walking with the weight. It does something. I don't know what. Yeah. It takes your exercise. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at it as an exercise adventure. Yeah. It took it to the next level. Now, I could do without bridges and stuff like that. Yeah. Because they move when you walk on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid of heights a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> it's great. Well, real soon we'll go to a campsite. Going to yes. set up a little site and build a fire. Yes. And uh, we're going to see how that goes. But it's baby steps. This is the first step. Have a little conversation about what it takes. Get a feel for the backpack on the back. That this kind of thing. I will compare this to a rucksack march. Yeah. A little bit. Look at Peggy talking in military terms, the ruck march. <laughs> hey, what's up, fam? I've already taken my jacket off. Uh, yeah. How'd you feel when you took your backpack off, babe? It felt, I felt so loose and light. I, I didn't realize how much weight it was. It gets heavier the more you walk to me. Mm -hmm. So it was good to take it off, and I wouldn't have known to sit down and take the backpack off. I would have just tried to stand and shake it off. So <laughs> that that was good. And yeah. I'm sure that helped my back a lot too. Yeah. I made sure she had pad in between. Cause you know, she had an E-tool, the big hard metal shovel and stuff in her bag. Mm -hmm. And you didn't want that to keep hitting up against your bag while you was walking. So we put the uh, ponchos at the very back. And that way there's the poncho between her and any of the metal and hard objects and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, a couple of tricks like that you don't even think about until you get out there. But now we know I got to pack my bag better. Peggy going to um, probably redistribute her weight a little more. I can probably add some more to her because she was she had it too easy. I did, <laughs> but it was our first time yeah. too. But then you think about it, it's like in my bag, I'm going to make sure I have comfortable shoes, knee socks. Mm -hmm. You know, you think stuff like that. You need to make sure you have a a hat. Me, I'm going to get a um, hoodie. Because I'm thinking if we have to walk at night in the dark by trees in the woods and stuff like that, I don't want something to fall out of the tree into the nape of my neck like that and get stuck and I get bit or anything like that. Yeah. I was thinking that if I had on a hoodie and I tied it up, that would stop anything from, not saying that it's going to keep me from getting bitten or anything like that, but it would just be better for me because I'm deathly afraid of yeah. any kind of insects, rodents, reptiles, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'll be thinking about. But I will definitely get comfortable shoes to have in there so that I could switch out most definitely yeah. that. I would not get a tennis shoe though hmm. because when we were walking up that way, there was some wet areas uh. and they were slippery and they were slick. Now, if I had these boots on and I put those little uh, shoe, the cleats, I guess they're cleats. Yeah. If I put those cleats over these boots, that would have worked for me. Okay. So I would think about stuff like that. You want to make sure you have gloves because as I was walking, when we first started walking, I wasn't cold, but closer you get to that water and stuff, you get cold. So make sure you have gloves. 
earmuffs, hats, scarves, if you can, you know, so that you can layer up. Yeah. Don't don't just start off with all that stuff. Like I said, um, yeah. if you get if you find yourself getting colder, then you add more. Yes. If you find yourself starting to sweat, you take away more. Yes. And you start loosening up clothing and stuff. That's that's the importance of having layers and stuff. Yeah. But you gotta make sure you have enough because once you sit still for a while, your body temperature starts to drop in cold weather. We're talking about winter time, but it does get cold in, at night in many places, even in the springtime or, or in the fall. So just make sure you have the right kind of stuff in your bag. Do a little rehearsal, see what it feels like. What yeah. kind of shoes you plan on wearing? Go off a walk in those. See how those feel yeah. for a good three, four, five miles and stuff like that. Because I would hate. See, here's my thought behind everything. I try. Like, if if you're not familiar with things to do, then you pack way too much, mm -hmm. and you don't want to pack away too much that you can't carry, and then have to ditch something that you may need later yeah. on down the road. So. You, you may want to just take your bag out for a walk, basically. You want to take it out for a walk to see if, if you decide that you want a bug out bag. We're not bug out, again, please, we're not bug out people, but just in case of an emergency, we're going to keep these backpacks in whichever car we're driving. Yes. And if we have to get out the car, say it was a bad accident or something happened on the highway and we're stuck there for hours and hours, we should be able to walk where we need to go yeah. that, that's all i'm saying like you just never know what can happen that's yeah. all i'm saying you want to be prepared for the worst exactly i'm proud of him. you proud of me i am i was <laughs> like you, you, learn, you learned all that from one walk and stuff but uh that was yeah. it was good to know exactly she had the bag it fits good it was, it took a little while to get used to it because it kind of like cuts off under her arm and stuff like that but when you pull it towards the middle it kind of yeah you have to wear the bag properly and please do that i didn't I didn't go across the front with it, and mm. that's I feel pressure on my back. Yeah, so I shouldn't have done that, and I'm feeling it now. Yeah. So Donald told me, and I was like, no, because I'm a, <laughs> I don't I feel restricted, yeah. but it's the reason why they tell you to do it. Now, those of you who have been camping and stuff like that, you know better. Yeah, I didn't know better, so that's what I'm saying. Like I would just ask every woman who plans on bugging out or who has an emergency bag, try your bag. That's all I'm saying. Try walking with it. And Try stuff. walking with it. Well, that was good. That was a good thing for today, y'all. I'm so glad we did it. Um, we're going to do this again yeah, until we get again. it right. We we'll go a little because, bit further. Yeah. And with with our because actual. Because a lot gear. of mistakes were made. Yeah. Like what we were wearing and stuff like that. So now I know what I should do. I'm going to tweak my bag a little bit, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go and we're going to walk further, heavier and further, and see what happens. So we're just learning as we go. Yep. And then after that, we're going to do a walk, set up a campsite build a fire, yes. cook something to eat. Just stay out all up. day and see what would happen. Exactly. Could we survive a day yep. if we had to survive a day? Because yep. I, I need to know if I could. So, Well, hey, good day for day, fam. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate all the, all the support you guys have been giving us. Please yes. remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We really yes. appreciate everything you guys have done for us. Uh, check out our Etsy page if you get a chance. Yes. We love to uh, get the support you guys have been showing us and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, just want to remind you guys to go out there and do something good for yourself. And for others as well. And for others as well. Y'all take it easy, fam. God bless.